How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and today we are finishing up our line of Kickstarter projects with one that is completely different from all the others I've covered this week. This is the Reflow project on Kickstarter and the whole idea behind it is actually pretty cool. It's all about recycling waste plastics from third world countries and turning them into filament for 3D printers. Now many of you will know my thoughts on recycling plastic into filament if you've seen any of my streams. It's a question I get asked quite a lot, but let me cover it in this project from two angles. One, from the hardcore Maker's Muse practical side of things, and two, from a more blue sky futuristic view on how we might be recycling plastic in the future. Let's get started. Welcome back guys, so this is Reflow and the whole idea behind Reflow is to recycle waste plastics from third world countries, specifically Tanzania. So you can see in these images, yes, you know, in these countries conditions are horrible, waste management is shocking and they have all these plastics and materials just sitting there. So the whole idea behind this project is to turn these waste materials into a financial resource for these locals. and as, as, as Jasper saying in this video, turn it into recycled plastic for your 3D printer. And yes, many of you will know my thoughts on recycling plastics into filament. There is many, many obstacles that need to be overcome, especially if you're trying to do it at home on low-end extrusion machines. But if you're doing it on a commercial level, things start getting a little bit more interesting. So why this project is on Kickstarter is that raising funds to initiate this project essentially to fund the mach machinery and to fund getting it off the ground. They've done some testing, but they really need to get the funding in to make it actually work. And again, Kickstarter projects are not guaranteed. This may or may not actually work. And there's a few reasons why recycling plastics is always a one-way street from virgin materials to very low quality waste materials. And the reason that is, is every time you remelt plastics, you actually kind of degrade them and they get weaker over time. There's also the problem with contamination. So if you have virgin plastics, they're gonna be clean after you extrude them. But if you have dirty plastics, then when you extrude them, the dirt comes with them. So the whole process of converting waste materials, waste plastics into 3D printing filament, there's actually many steps in between, which they go through in the campaign. So as you can see here, they've got their reflow process. So the worker collects the material, and this is where they're employing people and giving them a job to collect waste plastics. Then they're shredded and cleaned. This is extremely important. You need to shred the plastics into small components to melt evenly in your, in your hopper, and also you need to get rid of all the contaminants that you can. This means labels, inks, dirt, especially dirt, and any sort of other contaminating plastic. So they're working with PET. This is the same material that's used in water bottles and actually quite common for 3D printing today. So it's a decent material to target for recycling, but you want to make sure you don't get any other PVC or ABS mixed in with that material or you change the printing characteristics in a certain area of the roll if a small fragment goes in. You want it to be all the same plastic. So that's where the collection and sorting is very important along with the cleaning process. Next, they need to produce their filament. And this is where the reflow team is gonna hit another hurdle. So they're saying in their process, they're going to use a low cost open source extruder to turn plastic flakes into 3D printing filament. Let me show you a video of how filament is made commercially on a commercial level. So this is a video on the Make YouTube channel. I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video because I wanna show you how they make filament commercially on a commercial level. So this is a small scale American filament producer. I can't remember the name, but they go from virgin pellets into 3D printing filament. And what I need to show you is how they do it. So you might assume when you're extruding filament that if you want 1.75 millimeter filament, you have a 1.5 millimeter, 1.75 millimeter diameter hole that you push your filament through and then it turns into 1.75 millimeter filament, right? That's actually incorrect. How filament is made on a commercial level is they have a larger hole, a larger diameter, and the filament diameter is decided by how fast they pull that, that filament out because plastic will stretch 
and deform, it has no true melting point. It's hard to keep consistent. So to keep with this consistency, they will measure it with lasers across two axes and change the filament extrusion pulling speed depending on that diameter. They'll also run it through water baths that also cool the filament uniformly and quickly. And those water baths are at certain specific temperatures to cool it down not too fast and not too slow. Different types of plastic need different speeds and different water bath temperatures, different orifices and different everything. The parameters change. So imagine using recycled materials where every bottle could be a slightly different age, slightly different mix of PET. You start to see the issues and the difficulties that this project has to overcome. They're not a small amount of issues, but they are definitely solvable, I think, on a large scale. Because if you're processing, say, a small amount of recycled plastic, it's highly likely you'll get impurities. But if you're processing a colossal amount of recycled plastics, they kind of start to average out. And if you're mincing them all together in massive hoppers of hundreds of kilos worth at a time, cleaning it all and then extruding it, you're actually quite likely to get consistent filament, at least consistent across a batch. So I do think it's possible at the scale re the reflow team is trying to do. But at home, I have never really thought of filament extruders to be practical or at all useful. Now, the really cool thing about the reflow project is they've gotten in touch with me. Jasper got in touch with me and asked me to talk about the project. So I did have some reservations, but I have covered my reservations already. So let's go through the cool things they've done. So here they have a picture of their filament that they've done on their low cost extrusion machine. And here they have a print they've done. So granted, they can't print very much because they do run into the diameter control and consistency issues I have mentioned already, but they've proven you can turn waste materials into 3D printing filament. The, the proof of concept is right there. And it actually looks quite nice. It's sort of like a soft blue translucent filament. I would be happy to print that on my 3D printer as long as I knew it was fairly reliable. So the reflow team does have a fair amount of money to raise in the next few days, but they do have some cool perks and the main perk is their filament. So if we go down and have a look, it's 30 euro for a, here we go. I'm not really going to cover the art pieces. That's not really why I'm interested in this project. Uh, the rolls of filament are 30 euros plus shipping, which is expensive, but you've got this filament that has a story. It's sort of, it's come from this rubbish tip and being converted into 3D printing film, you can print some cool things in. And that's pretty cool. So if this sort of project does interest you, I would highly consider backing this project. And again, Kickstarter projects are not guaranteed. You may never see that filament, but it's an interesting idea. And I think the team behind it are serious about trying to make this work. But what about that blue sky approach I mentioned earlier? Well, with plastics, especially PET, ABS, and those sort of plastics, they're petroleum based. They are non-renewable, essentially. So I see in the future plastic mining to be a viable business model. And already we're starting to see recycling of precious metals like gold from computer waste computer parts to actually be higher yield than getting it from ore directly from the ground, which is pretty cool. If you think about waste computer parts, they're essentially very high concentrations of precious metal if you just work out a way to extract it. And I think we might start seeing the same thing with plastics because a lot of energy has gone in to produce them and that energy remains in the material. And indeed, some countries even burn, specifically China, burn plastics for energy. I think that's wrong. You're just, you're wasting that energy to get a bit of, you know, I think they use it for electricity sometimes or to boil water. I'd rather see those waste plastics be recycled into cool things. And many countries already have recycling programs in place. I myself have a recycling bin at the front. Glass can be infinitely recycled. Plastic can be recycled up to a degree, but many products on the market are starting to have recycled plastics in them. And I think it's just going to keep growing and growing as we start realizing that yes, we have finite resources and yes, we need to recycle what we've used. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments of this sort of project. Do you think this is the future of plastics recycling. Do you think we'll be seeing recycled plastics mandatory in 3D printing filaments in 20 years time? Do we even, are we even gonna be 3D printing with FGM technology then? I don't know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this idea. And I've said it before, recycling plastics does have its limitations, but there's also a noble idea behind recycling plastic, especially from third world countries, into something of 
value and it's something that's there and the whole idea of in future we might be mining plastic because it's a valuable resource isn't really that far-fetched and something I think we might start seeing in not the too distant future and actually probably is even happening in some countries. Anyway guys if you enjoyed this series of Kickstarter projects on Makers Muse give us a thumbs up and let me know what you think and also if, please consider subscribing if you want to see future 3D printing reviews, tips and tricks on Makers Muse. I'm not going to be doing another Kickstarter video for some time. I'm going to give the whole thing time to boil over and I think some of these projects you know, possibly didn't deserve the publicity I've given them but I do enjoy doing these these Kickstarter reviews and again keep in mind with any Kickstarter project you are pledging on a promise of getting something in the future you are not guaranteed anything and your pledge is little more than a donation under the eyes of Kickstarter. So if you have some money you can't afford to lose, maybe consider thinking twice before you pledge it into a Kickstarter project, but they are a very cool way of getting into some bleeding edge tech. Anyway guys, I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later.